wanted to take a couple moments to share his birth story because not a lot of people know how Jax came into the world. <laughs> I, I really wanted to actually archive this before I really forget all the details and everything. And I'm actually right now um, in a very significant place, um, which is Joel's bedroom. And you will see why this is such a significant place in this story. Um, I was due uh, to have Jax September 14th. I had uh, decided to work up until that Friday. What ended up happening was that the week before um, my leave, turns out we were going to get a hurricane. Now, that was not good news for me. <laughs> um, my I had decided to use a birthing center um, with a midwife um, and, you know, go that route. Um, I had had some bad experiences with Joel, my first son, um, and actually Jordan as well. Both of them were not delivered by doctors, but we were in hospitals. Long story. So I was um, supposed to have um, a midwife, del you know, deliver, help me deliver. Um, but I had gotten a phone call that week before saying, well, you know, we're having a hurricane. And so um, what we need you to do is go to the hospital and ride out the storm there. And I was like, excuse me. And I had found out later on um, that to ride out the storm at the local hospital, I had to bring my own bedding. I had to bring my, like you're literally camping out on the floor of the hospital. You're not in a room or anything. Of course, how can they? Because literally all the people in the whole entire, you know, area of where I lived, whoever was pregnant, they needed to go to the hospital to ride out the storm there. That's what they recommended because, you know, if anything would have hap happened to the roads or whatever, you couldn't get out and you're having it. Like, they just couldn't get anyone to you, whatever. A lot of people were warning me at the time about the barometric pressure or something saying the hurricanes, like, bring on babies. So I was just like, what? So anyway, that Friday, um, I really should be looking at a calendar just so I can get these dates right because my mommy brain is, um, you know struggling. I was due that 14th on the Thursday um, later. So this is all happening on the 6th. My last day was supposed to be the 8th. Um, and I was going to take that next week to just kind of prepare, get ready for the baby, whatever, whatever. So um, on Wednesday the 6th, um, we had found out from our school, they said, you know what, this hurricane's coming. Um, everyone take the time to get your houses ready, blah, blah, blah. Our pastor was like, from now until, you know, the hurricane, we're gonna be praying this hurricane away. And so we're having service and they asked me to accompany, you know, I play keyboard and they wanted me to play for the service. Um, but that morning on Thursday, I had started having contractions. At least I think they were. Later I realized that they were. Um, I was like, um, is this what they feel like? Because like I said, with my first son, I was induced. So the first contractions that I felt were crazy town, you know, contractions. They weren't like little, you know, pressure or something like that. It was like, I asked them to put me to sleep actually that time because I was like, um, I don't think I could do this. Whatever, that's a whole nother story. But throughout the whole entire day, my contractions were about 20 to 30 minutes apart. They were, they were at one moment it'd be 31. The next one would be 25 minutes later. The next one would be 28 minutes later. It was just a lot of, um, I had gone to service that night. It was a Thursday night. I was contracting as I was, you know, playing, which was crazy. And, um, and then that night I came home and then as soon as I came home, you know, I had a contraction. Then about 12 minutes later, I was like, I had another contraction. I was like, wow, okay, whatever. It still wasn't down to the five minutes or so that you know people want you to ha be at. So I was like, well, whatever. I'm just gonna sleep, and then you know we'll see what happens. Until I gotten awakened um, by my contractions, they were coming on strong. Like, um, yeah. And so I called my midwife. It's the middle of the night, and, I, and we're about to have a hurricane. Like the winds were already starting outside the window. It was already just going. And, but I had decided, oh, I should say that. I decided not to go to the hospital. And at the same time, I didn't need to be at the hospital yet, but 
the winds were kind of start to pick up and whatever. So I call my midwife and I'm like, I'm getting these contractions, you know, this is how many, you know, minutes apart they are, whatever. And she's like, um, well, why don't you go take a shower and, you know, see if they start to subside. Sometimes it could be a little bit, you know, you think that they're coming, you know, you think the baby's coming, but it's not really happening, whatever. So, excuse me. And even when I'm in the shower, I'm like, I think I'm about to really... <laughs> I'm about to have this baby like I could push and with both my other two that's why my babies were not none of my babies were oh maybe I'm getting ahead of myself I'll just say both my other sons um like the urge to push was just so strong I just had to push them out and they just came out without a without a doctor fast forward back to where we are now so I had um taking my shower, I got out and I was like, you know what, these contractions, and by that time, it, I wasn't even really timing them anymore because the pain was like, kind of like, yeah, sis. And I got on the phone and I was like, yeah, they're not, it's not really subsiding. <laughs> and, and so she was just like, okay, well, you know, just kind of, you know, and then I don't even know what happened after that. All I know is that, you know, my husband was sleeping and I woke him up and I was like, Frank, get a garbage bag, cut, slice it open and cover this bed right behind me. Yes, what you are thinking is exactly what happened. I delivered baby Jacks in my son's bedroom. Yes. And guess who delivered him? Bishop Frank. I'll let that marinate for a second, but this is exactly what happened. I show enough got on this bed and I was on the phone with my midwife the whole time and I'm like this, just laying on the bed, you know, ready to have this baby. I think I pushed maybe three times. That baby wanted out. And I was like, I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> and I'm on the phone with my midwife and she's just telling me what to do. I push that baby out. Turns out Jax had a little, his, um, umbilical cord wrapped around his neck as Franklin caught the baby like hut hut and was you know had to you know make sure that he removed it and then fully brought the you know the baby could fully you know come out and then I had to take the baby put him on my bare chest wrap him in a towel and just hold him there and keep him warm until my midwife came she came about 15 minutes later but the baby just came so fast like and honestly this happened with both my other two babies as well i remember with jordan which is why he came out in the ambulance I, my water didn't even break with him out like for hours i was like i feel like i could push him out right now but they were just like just hold on just hold on just hold on and i was like he just <laughs> y'all this baby wants to come out and finally i was like i can't hold him in i i gotta hold i gotta push this baby out Oh, pretty much. That's what happened with Jax as well. Now, I will say this. Out of all my pregnancies, he was probably, like, the easiest to deliver, the least pain even. He came out so quick, and I want to attribute it to the raspberry leaf tea that I was um, drinking um, throughout my pregnancy. Think of having my baby with, having Joel, I was like, I would get terrified even smelling a hospital. I'm like, oh. like, so traumatized by that experience. Um, same thing with Jordan, but then this, I'm like, man, I feel like I could have another baby. I don't know if I'm having another baby, but a long time ago when I was um, around 18 or 19 years old, I had moved into this, um, a family friend's house and all my stuff, my pictures, my yearbooks, you know, all the different things, we kind of stored it in this lady's shed and in where I live, the humidity is so thick, you know what I mean? And it just destroyed everything actually. And I, I, it, it was a huge loss to me because all my baby pictures, everything I had was completely destroyed and unsalvageable. And until this day, my heart really aches um, because I don't have anything to really look at as far as, you know, my baby pictures and just different things like that. And so that's why I wanted to take time. I said, before my mind really forgets all the details of what happened. And I actually didn't even involve everything. I didn't like say everything even now. Um, but the main things, um, I wanted to capture the main story I wanted to capture, um, and the little details that I could, um, and just share with you guys what actually 
happened on that night. And so I went into um, a hurricane, <laughs> which was nuts, um, with a brand new baby. And can I tell you, so many people during that uh, storm lost power and water. And they were just, you know, they had some, some struggles and really felt for them. But in my house, the grace of God, I'm not saying God doesn't have grace on everybody else, but I just know that for my personal situation and me having a, a brand newborn going into a hurricane because I we ended up staying home because the baby just came and I did not lose power. I think the, the power flickered off like once or twice, but it came right back on. It wasn't anything significant and we had water. I had everything and we were just chilling in Joel's room, which is where I'm at. His room is such a disaster right now, but it always is a disaster. But just sitting here riding the storm with my brand new sweet baby boy, and I'll try to insert some pictures. All in all, it was just, it was a really cool experience. And just the fact that Bishop Frank delivered Jax, I wanted Jax to have Frank's name. So we were going to, he was going to be a junior because we have Joel, Jordan, and then junior. That was going to be the J. We ended up going with Jax, which is kind of a French um, you know, Jacques or Jacques, I don't know. I don't speak French, but, um, kind of like an anglicized version of John in French. Okay. But it means God is gracious. And we just felt like that would just be a really great name. So his name is Jax Franklin. Um, and we love it. And he, he feels like a total Jax. You know, one day he'll have a college application and he'll say, Jax. And, you know, what will people think? And, you know, you just kind of think like that. But um, whatever. It is what it is. So anyway, um, if you guys tuned in until now, God bless you. Um, I've been back and forth thinking about starting a YouTube because um, there's just so many things I just want to share. I feel like God has laid on my heart to share with the world. Um, and I never really had time. And I still kind of don't really have time. But if he really wants me to do something, like for him to really give me the chance to do it. So we'll see. And if this is something that you want um, to see more of, more videos, more ex of my life experience, more things with my family, other birth stories. Um, I love doing food reviews <laughs> and anything that adds, you know, just beauty to this life. I just love it. And so um, if it's a channel that you feel like you would want to watch, um, let me know and I will go forward and do it. Even if it's just one or two of you and you're like, you know what? We feel like your content would add value to our life and our lifestyle and, 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 and our quality of living and you feel like it would be helpful. I would do it because to me, it's a ministry. Um, I know this video is super duper long. Thank you for watching. And, um, thank you for forgiving me for my appearance. I am completely makeupless, full of hyper pigmentation and, um, a lot of postpartum hair loss <laughs> and all that jazz, but um, everyone's always been so sweet, especially on my Instagram and my Facebook. Everyone's always so supportive and always um, cheering me on and championing my family, and I just appreciate that. And so with all that said, God bless you. I hope you enjoyed the story. You guys take care, and I'll see you later. Deuces. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube and find me on Instagram. Bye.